In this video, what I want to show you is why for loops and arrays are such a good marriage. And if you remember, when you create an array, it has to have a fixed length. And this length is going to be 10, and the index is going to run from 0 to 9. And all you have to do to find out what the length of any array is, is use the field length. So I say scores.length, and that is going to equal 10. Now if you look at this code down here, you can see that I start at index 0 and I go all the way to index 9. And I'm doing this 10 times, and that should annoy the bejeebers out of you. Because what you are doing is using 10 lines of code to accomplish something that could be done with a for loop that could be iterated through and access each element rather than having to print it out time and time again. Now with 10 it's not so bad, but imagine if you were doing, if your array had 200 pieces of information in it. Would you want to have to print 200 lines of code and code in each individual index? Well no, that would be, that would be silly. So let's show you how to use a for loop when accessing an array. So we're going to say for int index equals zero and the reason why I'm using index is because the index is what you're looping through you can see up here I'm using the index in order to access what's inside of that slot or what that element is inside of that slot and then I'm going to say index is less than scores dot length And the reason why I'm saying scores.length as opposed to saying less than or equal to scores.length is because remember, the length of the array is 10, but the index ends at 9. So if I was to say equal to, it would give me an index out of bounds. I want to say less than index, so I'm not going one past the actual length of the array. And then finally, I'm going to say index plus plus. And what that's going to do for me is, of course, add one each time. So the first time I'm going to access the first index, second index, third index, so on and so forth. And remember, I'm going to be starting at zero because arrays always start at zero. They do not start at the one index. And then I'm just going to simply print out the information. So I say system.out.print scores sub and I'm going to put something in there in just a second but I'm going to concatenate a space on afterwards and like I said earlier what I am putting inside of here is the index so the first time the loop iterates is it's going to be 0 then it's going to be 1 2 so on and so forth so I get each piece of information so let me compile this loop and run it and you can see that I get 1 through 10 that's this printing out right here, and I'm doing the exact same thing with the loop right here, and it gives me the exact same information. Far easier to do it with a for loop. Now I'm going to copy this using Control J, so I have some spaces at the end, and now I'm going to show you a for loop. Instead of going beginning to end, I'm going to go end to beginning. So I'm going to say for in index, and instead of starting at zero, I'm going to start at the end. So I'm going to say scores dot length and I have to subtract one for it. The reason why is again because if I start at 10 it's going to give me index out of bounds but if I start at 9 which is where the index ends I can access every element in the array without getting an error. And then I'm going to say index and the place that I want to stop is the first index and the first index is 0 so I'm going to say greater than or equal to 0 and then I'm going to say index, not plus plus, but minus minus. The reason why I'm doing minus minus is because I'm going, instead of starting at the beginning, I'm going from the end to the beginning, so I need to make sure that I'm going down, not up. And then the interior of the loop is going to look exactly the same. System dot out dot print. And I say scores sub index. And I'm going to concatenate on that space. Don't forget my semicolon. Compile, make sure there aren't any errors, and then run it. And I can see, again, here's the first loop that I did, 1 through 10, and here's the second one that I do backwards. I start at scores.length, minus 1, go all the way to 0. In this next program, what I'm going to do is show you that. 
and when an array is created, it does have default values in it. I know I told you about this in a previous video, but I actually want to show you in the code. And it's a great way to use a for loop, print out the information just like we did in the last program. This is a loop just like the last program, except for I used i, I shortened index to i. Now, the middle loop right here, what I want to do is after I have printed out the information inside of the loop, what I want to do is show you that you can fill the information. The way that you would fill it is you would say the name of the array, which is scores, and then we're going to say scores sub index. So the first time it fills, it's going to fill index 0, then it's going to iterate, it's going to fill index 1, 2, 3, all the way to the end. And I'm going to use random numbers. So if you remember from a previous chapter how to create random numbers, I'm going to use the numbers 100 to 500. So I'm going to say int math.random times 401 plus 100. So again, it's 100 to 500. And what that's going to do is at each index, it's going to put a random number between 100 and 500. And then finally what I do in this program is I use another loop to print out the new information after it's been filled with random information. So let's go ahead and compile, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Then I'm going to run and you can see the first time that it prints out it's going to print all zeros. So like I said, arrays are not empty. They have information inside of them. Then I fill it with a random number from 100 to 500, and then I print it out again, and we see the filled array with the random values. So you can see that a for loop is very useful in printing out information and putting information inside of a loop. This program shows you a common thing that you can do inside of a loop, and that is sum the values. You're going to sum up the values inside of the array. So you can see up here that I've created an array. I've put in the values 1 through 10. And then what I've done is created an accumulator called sum. And it's going to start at 0, and it's going to be an int value because these are int values. And then I have my for loop that's looping through scores. But I'm also inside of my for loop, I'm going to say sum plus equals scores of index. And what that's going to do is the index is going to be 0. And so the first time it's going to be 1, and then the second information is going to be 2. And it's going to add it all up, save it in sum, and then right down here I'm going to print it out. So let's compile it, make sure I didn't make any errors, run it. And you can see that 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to 10 is 55. So this is, again, a common thing to do inside of a loop, summing up all the values inside of an array. With this final program in this set of programs, I'm going to show you how to find the maximum and minimum values inside of an array. So I've created an array, put some pretty much random values in there. They're all some multiple of 5. And you can see the lowest value right here is 5, the highest value is 50. I create two values, one called int max, one called int min. Now the reason why I'm not going to put 0 here, and I'm not going to put 0 here, is for practicality. Think about it. If I put 0 here inside of math.max, well what happens if all of these values are negative? Is it going to find the negative value? Well no what it's going to do is stay as zero. So what I do is I pick something that's already inside of the array, therefore I know it is going to be a contender for max rather than putting in a zero here and it may or may not be the max value. The same holds true for minimum. What happens if I put a zero in there? Well if I ran this and I found the minimum, are any of these values lower than zero? Well no. So when I would get done with my array, I would find that I still had 0 as my minimum value instead of 5 because no values are smaller. The next portion of what I'm going to do is then iterate through the array, look at each value, print it out, 
And then you can see that I've used simple code right here, simple if statements, to try to figure out what is the minimum value and what is the max value. I say score is some index, so the first one's going to be zero. Okay, if that's greater than max, then that is my new max value. And I also look at it and say, whatever this value is, whatever is a zero, if it's less than min, that is going to be my new min value. Then I come down here and print out the information under max and min. And so let's run the program and see what happens. I do, I get the correct values. 50 is the largest and 5 is the smallest. For loops are an integral part of arrays. They work so well because we know the length of an array. It's fixed and fixed iteration, which for loops utilize is a perfect way to to both put information into an array and display that information of the array.